Howdy, it's Kyle talking about Nebraska. In this video, I'll be going over various aspects of the geography of the state. I'll be talking about the cities and population. I'll be going over the physical geography to include the scenery, protected areas, and the climate. I'll be going over economic indicators to include the GDP, companies that are headquartered there, industries that drive the economy, taxes, and agriculture. And I'll also be discussing the food from the state. So if you're interested in learning more about the corn husker state, this is the video for you. Nebraska sits pretty close to the middle of the contiguous U.S. It's the 15th largest state in the country in terms of area, and it ranks 37th in population with right about 2 million people living there. And even though it's a Midwestern state, it does stretch pretty decently into the West, with the western third of the state being in the mountain time zone. Nebraska was admitted to the U.S. in 1867 as the 37th state. I also wanted to mention its flag. It's notoriously one of the ugliest ones in the country, and there's a pretty funny story about how it was flown on the state capitol building upside down for 10 days, and no one even noticed. But because the flag is so ugly, there have been talks about changing it in the future. The capital city is Lincoln, which has a population of about 300,000 people, which makes it the 68th largest city in the U.S., and there's about 350,000 people or so in the Lincoln metropolitan area. Nebraska is one of only four states that has a high-rise state capitol building, and I think it's by far the nicest of the four. And even though it's kind of a weird-looking building, I really like it. I think it's a really good state capitol. And there's also something pretty unique going on inside the state capitol building, and that is it's the only state in the country that has a unicameral state government. All of the other states, as well as the federal government, have a bicameral legislature. The U.S. government has the Senate and the House of Representatives, and other states have things that are called the Senate or the Assembly or whatever it happens to be, but Nebraska has just a state Senate. The city of Lincoln falls into a category of cities that I mentioned in many other videos, and it's both a state capital and a college town. In cities like this, I've seen a lot of economic growth in the past decade or so, and some of the strongest economies at the city level are in some of these cities that are both state capitals and college towns. Lincoln is nowhere near as large as Raleigh or Columbus, Austin, or Denver, but it does still have a pretty strong economy and it's been growing quite a bit. And I do like Lincoln. I think it's a pretty nice town. I think it ranks well above average compared to other cities in that size range of about 250,000 to 500,000. The downtown's pretty nice and there's a pretty cool part of town called the Haymarket. It's the main art and entertainment district in the city. There's a lot of nice restaurants and nightlife and live music and bars and just a pretty fun place to hang out. And randomly enough, it was one of the first places I went bar hopping after turning 21. That was about 20 years ago, but yeah, the Haymarket, pretty fun. The largest city in the state is Omaha, with a population just under 500,000, which makes it the 42nd largest city in the U.S. The Omaha metro area has just about 1 million people, which ranks it 60th in the U.S. However, about 100,000 of those live across the border in Iowa, but the vast majority of the Omaha metro area is in Nebraska. It's home to the Henry Dorley Zoo, which is one of the world's truly great zoos, and it's Nebraska's number one tourist attraction. The last time I was there was about three years ago. It was undergoing a huge remodel at the time. It was already great before the remodel, and it's only better now, so I'd love to see it on one of my next road trips. And as I record this, the city is also doing a major remodel of the riverfront area downtown. The Missouri River flows right next to the city and is also the state boundary with Iowa. And there's a really cool pedestrian bridge that goes over the river into Iowa. When I had been there before, I liked the downtown. I thought it was a pretty cool place to hang out. I liked the riverfront district with some pretty cool shops and stuff, so I hope they don't screw it up too much with this major remodel. And Omaha is also home to the annual College World Series, so each year the top college baseball programs in the country descend on Omaha for the championships. One thing that people are often surprised to hear is that Omaha has a pretty high violent crime rate and a pretty serious gang problem. I think a lot of folks are like, well, it's Nebraska, it has to be nice, right? But it is also a pretty big city. It has your typical big city problems. But overall, I really like Omaha a lot. And just like Lincoln, I think it ranks well above average compared to other cities in its size range. Omaha and Lincoln are only about 55 miles apart from each other. And two thirds of the population of the state lives in just those two metros. So Nebraska is one of many states where a large majority of the population lives in just a small part of the state. The rest of Nebraska is very sparsely populated. After Omaha and Lincoln, the next largest city is significantly smaller, and that's Grand Island with about 55,000 people. Also interesting is that about 80% of the population of the state, or approximately 1.6 million people, live within about 15 miles of Interstate 80, which goes east-west across the entire state. 
So some of the numbers with Nebraska's population and population density are much more like some of the interior mountain states of the western U.S. For example, there are 93 counties in the state. 12 of them have a population of under 1,000 people. 23 more have a population under 5,000. And 29 more have a population under 10,000. So 64 of the 93 counties have under 10,000 people. Also, there are 11 contiguous counties in the north central part of the state that have a combined 7,000 people. So this is an area about the size of New Hampshire or Maryland with only 7,000 people. And to further illustrate just how sparsely populated most of Nebraska is, the western two-thirds of the state has a combined population of 200,000 people. This is an area about the size of Alabama or New York. So it's a very dichotomous state with two fast-growing cities with booming economies, while the rest of the state has very stagnant population or even declining population. So these numbers are much more in line with some of the interior western states. So if you've heard me talking about Nevada or Idaho or Wyoming, these are states with large areas with very few people. But a big difference is that those states have topographical barriers to population. So you have really high mountains and high mountain passes and areas of people just can't live. But Nebraska, there are no topographical barriers for having population. There just aren't many people living there. Now I want to talk about some of the physical geography of Nebraska. So I'll be going over the topography, scenery, and the protected areas, as well as the climate. And when you think of Nebraska, you might think flat. However, most of the state is not flat. It's mostly rolling hills or badlands type topography. And in my opinion, this scenery is very pretty. Most of the central and western portions of the state are in the sand hills, which is a large area of sand hills. So they're kind of like sand dunes, but covered in grass. So they don't quite look like the big sand dunes you'll see in desert portions of the country. And this is that part of the state that has the most sparsely populated areas. Within the sand hills, you have some national grasslands and national wildlife refuges. So some pretty nice scenery that's protected. At the extreme western end of the state near the Wyoming border is Scott's Bluff National Monument. And this is a pretty small park, but it does have some really nice badland scenery. In the northwestern corner of the state, you have Shadron State Park and Toadstool Geologic Park, which also showcase some really nice badland scenery. The highest elevation in the state is Panorama Point, which is in the extreme southwestern corner of the state, right along the state borders with Wyoming and Colorado, and it's about 5,400 feet. The scenery is certainly less than spectacular, but it shows that at 5,400 feet, the high plains are pretty high. Denver is called the Mile High City. Well, Panorama Point is also a mile high. The Missouri River, which is one of the most important rivers in the U.S., forms the eastern boundary of the state with Iowa. The Platte River goes across pretty much the entire state from west to east and then joins the Missouri River just south of Omaha. And the Niobrara River goes across the entire state as well from west to east, but this is in the far northern part of the state, pretty near the South Dakota border. And for a canoeist like myself, the Niobrara River is one of the best rivers in the country for a long trip. You can do a trip for a week or more camping on little sandbars off the side of the river. It's got very nice scenery, you go through very little urban development, and it's just a great float trip. People often lump Nebraska with Iowa or Kansas when they're talking about places that are flat and ugly and brown and featureless, but that's not true about Nebraska. I think a lot of it's very pretty. So now I want to discuss the climate of the state. And when a lot of folks think of the climate of Nebraska, the first things I might think about are severe thunderstorms and tornadoes. And indeed, Nebraska is one of the most at-risk states for tornadoes, although it's not quite as bad as Kansas or Oklahoma to the south. Spring is a time of the year where you're most likely to see tornadoes there, with April and May being the two busiest months. This is the time of the year when you have the really cold air masses from Canada and the really warm air masses from the Gulf of Mexico colliding. Summers, for the most part, are pretty pleasant. It can get pretty hot there, and it does get a little bit humid, but nowhere near as much as you're going to find to the east and south of there. But the winters make up for that, and they're pretty brutal. It gets really cold, really high winds, and really low wind chill temperatures. But because the high plains are so dry with little precipitation, even though it gets really cold during the winter, it doesn't get a ton of snow. Of course, it does snow in Nebraska, but not as much as the eastern portions of the Midwest and nowhere near as much as New England. But because Nebraska isn't as far north as the Dakotas or Minnesota, even though it does get really cold, the winters don't last as long. So those bitter cold temperatures might only last three or four months instead of four or five months. So I think it's pretty fair to say that most of the year the weather is pretty agreeable in Nebraska. You get a few months of really cold temperatures and you have to dodge a few severe thunderstorms, but for the most part, it's pretty nice there. 
The next few categories I'm going to be talking about are the economic ones. So I'll be talking about the GDP, the income, industries that drive the economy, companies that are headquartered in the state, as well as taxes and agriculture. So in other words, show me the money. Nebraska's GDP is $129 billion, which ranks at 36th in the U.S. Its GDP per capita is $64,000, which makes it 15th in the U.S., and its household income is $60,000 a year, which ranks at 27th in the U.S. Normally, states have similar ranks for GDP per capita and household income, but again, with Nebraska at 15th and 27th respectively, that's pretty unusual. And that is in large part due to one company and one man, that is Berkshire Hathaway Corporation and Warren Buffett. It's such a huge multinational holding company that it raises the GDP of Nebraska quite a lot, and the state only has about 2 million people. But because most of that money is not income per se, it doesn't affect the household income as much as it does the GDP per capita. So all that money Warren Buffett has is largely due to stock dividends and not income. But that's what can happen with one huge company in a relatively small state. The three main sectors of the economy in Nebraska are finance and insurance, agriculture and ag manufacturing, and transportation. And as I alluded to when talking about Omaha, it's a city that's home to several major insurance companies, the largest of which is Mutual of Omaha, but it's also home to Woodman of the World, as well as a national indemnity company. In terms of transportation, Nebraska is home to the Union Pacific Railroad, which is the second largest rail system in the U.S. And also calling Nebraska home is Werner Enterprises, which is a large worldwide freight and trucking company. Other major companies headquartered in Nebraska include Entrado, which is formerly known as West Telecommunications, and this is a major company for teleconferencing and emergency calling systems. And it's also home to the Kewitt Corporation, which is a major construction and engineering company. Unfortunately, just in the past few years, Nebraska has suffered a few gut punches in terms of its companies. A few years ago, ConAgra Foods, which is a major corporation for processed and packaged foods, laid off over a thousand workers in Omaha and moved its headquarters to Chicago. In 2019, TD Ameritrade, which was a major stockbroker company headquartered in Omaha, was bought out by the Charles Schwab Corporation and subsequently they moved the corporate headquarters to Dallas. And back in 2017, Cabela's Outdoor Retailer, which is headquartered in Nebraska, was bought out by Bass Pro Shops. At the time of me recording this, Cabela's is still a company operating on its own, and its headquarters is still in Nebraska, but if things go like they normally do and stuff like this, it's going to eventually be consolidated, and the, all the operations are going to be moved to wherever Bass Pro Shop is headquartered. And to Nebraska, that kind of has to feel like a gut punch to lose these companies to Chicago and Dallas, and I personally would much rather be in Omaha than either Chicago or Dallas, but Chicago and Dallas have a lot more money than all of Nebraska, and that's what talks. Although insurance and finance is the largest part of the Nebraska economy, it's most well known for its agriculture. Nebraska is one of the top states in the country for livestock and feed crops. For livestock, it's second in the country in terms of cattle, with only Texas having more, and sixth in the country in terms of hogs. And being the corn husker state, Nebraska is big in corn as well. It's third in the country, but it is behind both Iowa and Illinois in corn. And it also ranks fourth in the country in soybean production. One thing that's interesting to note is that Kansas is the number one state in the country for wheat, and that's just south of Nebraska, but Nebraska is not a big player at all in wheat production. I'm not sure exactly why that is, but it probably has something to do with the sand hills, like I mentioned before, which is a huge area of just sand, and that's not good at all for growing grain. But the sand hills do have grass on them, so it's great for grazing cattle. So after insurance, ag, and transportation, the largest sector of the economy is defense. It's home to the large Offutt Air Force Base, which is located just south of Omaha. The base is home to the U.S. Strategic Command, or STRATCOM. It's also home to the Air Force's weather wing, as well as the Military Meteorology Center. So that warms my heart that the weather nerds in the Air Force are there in Nebraska. So next, I want to talk about everyone's favorite category, and that's taxes. The state income tax ranges between 3.5% and 6.8%, depending on income with most people paying between 5 and that 6.8%. So its state income tax is pretty average compared to other states. It has a 6.9% sales tax rate, which is the 27th highest in the country. There's a $0.31 cent per gallon gas tax, which is the 24th highest in the country. 
but it has one of the highest property taxes in the country at 1.8%, which is the seventh highest in the country. And also, Nebraska is one of only 13 states in the country that taxes Social Security benefits. So it has average income, sales, and gas taxes, but it has a really high property tax and taxes Social Security. So overall, Nebraska is an above average tax burden state. So now I want to talk about some of the signature foods of the state. And Nebraska is where a few unique sandwiches originated. One of them is called a Runza, which is a sandwich named after the Runza restaurant that invented them. It's a mix of beef, cabbage, and onions thrown together into a bread pocket. So it's essentially a hot pocket with slightly better ingredients, but you know, don't tell anybody from Nebraska that, but yeah, it's essentially a hot pocket. It's also home to something called cheese Frenchies, which is literally a deep fried grilled cheese sandwich, and it's every bit as healthy as it sounds. It's probably the only food out there that will give you diarrhea and constipation at the same time. But let's be honest, it's a deep fried grilled cheese sandwich, so it tastes amazing. But Runza's and cheese Frenchies are pretty much found only in Nebraska, but one of their signature foods that's made it throughout the entire country is the Reuben sandwich. A Reuben is corned beef, sauerkraut, Swiss cheese, Russian dressing on rye bread. So it's kind of an odd mix of things to put together on a sandwich, and I'm not really a fan of them, but they are pretty popular at delis across the U.S. And with Nebraska being such a huge producer of beef in the U.S., steaks are going to be a big part of the meals there. And you've probably heard of Omaha Steaks, which is mail delivery steaks and other meats. I've had them before and they're okay, but I don't really get the big deal with them. It's also kind of weird to be getting frozen steak in the mail, but they are pretty popular. So those are the things I wanted to discuss when talking about Nebraska. And I think it's an underappreciated state, but one that I like a lot. It's one of my favorite states in the Midwest. And I really enjoy that drive east-west across the north central and northwestern portions of the state on some of those back roads. And you're in some of these tiny little towns that see no tourists at all. But the people there are really friendly and really welcoming. And you can go into little cafes and little shops and people there are like kind of surprised to see you. But they're happy to see you there too. I hope you found the information in this video useful. If you did, please give me a thumbs up to let me know you approve and subscribe to this channel if you're interested in hearing more about U.S. geography, travel, road tripping across the U.S., just other nerdy things about geography of the U.S. But yeah, thanks for watching. Geography King, signing out.